that will transport the arms and get them moving. And once we get them moving, I like to use the trigger of once we get the hands past the trail leg, it's now time to load up the arms. That one felt the best today. It's probably a combination of everything that we've done. Um, so let's talk about the movement of the arms in the backswing. Now, during all my coaching sessions, one of the most common questions that I get is, do I move the club? Do I move the hands? Do I pull my arms? Do I rotate my body? Are the arms quiet? Are they active? Yes. There's a plethora out there, right? Correct. And we were just talking before about there is a variety of drills. You might see something like a bucket drill of moving into position, but sometimes when you get an object in your hands, and even if this player, let's say they weren't moving their arms correctly, and they're kind of dragging this thing back, when you place an object in your hand, especially for a recreational golfer, with out a coach's um, viewing over what you're doing, we'll tend to see that, that they just do this, Correct. right? And then before you know it, you add in a little bit of turn with yeah. that. Now yeah. the club is three feet behind you and you're out of position. So we were talking about that. The initial movement of this golf club is facilitated simply by the fact of a shift of pressure. Let's yes. call it a, the trigger that you see with the professional golfer, the trigger that starts the backswing and in space, the arms are moving at an effect saying soft and long. Let's expand a little bit on that. Okay, so first understanding the concept of how we load something is going to determine how we can unload something. Mm -hmm. So we always think of golf as there's a backswing and there's a downswing. Yeah. Thinking of it more in terms of there's a, there's a load and then there's going to be an unload, I think is an important thought. Correct. So as we load the golf club into the arms and the backswing, understanding that early rotation of the arms. So if we're going to bring in this early motion of the arms, first off, that's a key sign that we're not using the body at all. Correct. Okay, we're, we're creating that initial motion of the handle all through forearms and wrists. And as you mentioned, in doing that, right away we get the golf club out of position. So the yeah. golf club typically opens up. So the face of the golf club is going to roll open and the shaft is going to get way inside at that point. Again, typically players from that point, they're going to come over the top, they're going to struggle with slices. So learning to trigger the motion, as you said, with a shift of pressure, and we're not talking this massive shift of mass, yeah. we're just talking about a little feel of going from lead foot to trail foot. Correct. Okay? A little pressure shift followed by the rotation or the pivot of the body that will transport the arms and get them moving. And once we get them moving, I like to use the trigger of once we get the hands past the trail leg, it's now time to load up the arms. Yeah, and I think this blends beautifully into the other videos that we've done in this series. It's all about using that body to move the club and the arms into position. And if you have a secure hold without tension in your long structured arms, what is going to happen naturally is the weight of this golf club, seeing it as heavier than the grip, will encourage as we shift and we turn, this golf club to set into position. They would load, right? Yes. Whereas if we didn't use the body and I try and create that, well then all of a sudden in the attempt to get into a similar position, which doesn't look too dissimilar, Yes. but if I actually now rotate my body, you can see I actually haven't done anything with my arms at all. So all I've done is kind of move them across my body, but my wrists haven't been active, haven't loaded anything as Absolutely. such. So after we've got this little shift of pressure into the trail foot to start the backswing, the body is the engine here. Now, what is the reference by the time that the lead arm is parallel with the ground with that club shaft? Okay, so I, I like two reference points from that position. From the face on perspective, being able to see when that lead arm is parallel to the ground, we should see something close to 90 degrees, mm -hmm. okay? If that angle, let's just say that it's 100, it's a little bit shy, it's no panic, but I, I would have more issues if we're seeing stuff like this, or if we're seeing in the exact opposite situation, aggressive narrowing like that. Oh, yeah. So as a reference, if we're in and around 90, it's a good spot. Mm -hmm. Now, from the down the line perspective, 
if we can get the butt end of the golf club to point close to that ball to target baseline, yeah. that's going to be a good indication that the shaft pitch or where this golf club is orientated here is in the right spot. Yeah, and generally I would say I would prefer to see players, all things being equal, anywhere from the ball line to probably about a grip length inside and being a little bit steeper there. As soon as you get into this position here, well, what's happening is now I am essentially unloading my wrists into a position to achieve that. And you can see the grip, it's pretty much pointing out at you, definitely not at that ball line with this 90 degree angle that you're kind of talking about there. Exactly. The two most common patterns that I see when players get it wrong, if you go into the setup, we've got the players who are going to rotate or roll the forearms in, and now things get too deep and too flat mm. they face often very open oh yeah the flip side of that is the players who lift the arms away from the body yeah and at this point if anything they get the golf club too much in this orientation right here where it's just standing up they don't have any depth to the <laughs> arms at all yeah. so in, in both of those situations we're typically going to run into some issues in the downswing yeah yeah and i think that's a great way to put it and when it comes to the the loading of the wrist and the orientation we just did a great video on the angle of how this should work more of on a 45 rather than a straight yeah. up and just as a simple reference for players to use at home if they're trying to get a feeling of what this position is like but in a more simplistic fashion from your address, just stand up dead straight with the club out in front of you, hinge your wrists on a 45 degree angle so you can kind of see your hands in line with the right shoulder there from that face on view, and then rotate the chest back towards the camera and then tilt down. Then all of a sudden, you got the flat left wrist, you got the hands in front of the chest, we've loaded the shaft, and that's in a great spot where we've got the right amount of rotation and lifting of the arms. Absolutely, and we've at this point, we've loaded in a way that our downswing's going to be so much more easy, so much more logical for us to be able to orientate. So if we can simplify how we load the golf club into the arms, the job going through is so much more athletic. Mm, great. Okay, so I'm going to map this out by just doing a couple of small little swings there. Uh, as I do so, is there anything else that you would add into this movement pattern? No, I like that. I like the sensation of pointing that butt end somewhere just inside that ball to target line, feeling as though you've got yourself somewhere around 90. At that point, I'd say that you've taken care of the easiest way to load the golf club. And then you can go through, you can rotate and extend through with no stress. Yeah, and I just feel, and you know, what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm absolutely just gonna set that and then hit it from that position. And because I loaded it in the back, so it just felt so easy to get it back to the ball. And you can see ball first, ground second contact and went dead straight at the target. Yeah. Now, just to add in one last thing, when players are working on backswing adjustments, typically speaking, it's difficult to be aware of things that we're doing in the backswing without pausing. Mm. So in the phases of learning, once you discover what that movement feels like, just by doing it without a golf ball, being able to get that to work with the golf ball. Start with those pauses. It's a great way to learn it. Love it. Good job. Awesome, Cheers. Dude.